We are now going to be joined by Anna Kendrick, star of Into the Woods, opening up on Christmas Day. Let's do this. I want to talk to you about Into the Woods because, first of all, I mean, this is sort of 27 years in the making, honestly, this yeah. movie getting to the screen. So what is sort of your relationship with Into the Woods? Where I know you're sort of a theater kid, but I'm like... I'm entirely responsible. No, 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 but I mean in terms of, you know, were you... Because I know all the music. I never yeah. saw the musical. You know, that was um, sort of my relationship to it. Yeah, I mean, I saw the Bernadette uh, Peter's VHS tape when I was like 10 or something. And I just, I mean, I loved it so much. And I, even then I felt like this is dark. Jesus. Um, and I saw, I like had blocked this out, but I saw my brother play the baker when he was at college. And I didn't remember that until about a month ago. Really? Yeah. Um, and so it's been a part of my life for a long time and I've loved it for a long time and everybody in the film um, loves it. Like it's, it's into it. Yeah, it's it's definitely something where we knew what we were getting into and to see um, Meryl Streep and Christine Baranski and Tracy Ullman like sitting around a dinner table just like off hours, off the clock, you know, talking about like, okay, like how do we honor this thing? It was like, I wish I could show that to people because it was like everybody... No one was being cavalier about going into this. Oh, you know? sure. Well, not, we all know it's a big deal. It is a big deal. And it's also working with Sondheim lyrics, which yeah. are not a joke. Yeah. Even if you were sort of a train singer, they're difficult, yeah. right? Yeah. While her withers wither with her. It's it's like, it's cruel, actually. Um, yeah, the lyrics are no joke and the melodies are even harder. Um and we just had a great music team, um, Paul Gemignani, for the theater nerds in the audience, um, uh, is uh, was our musical director. And he worked with me on uh, High Society when I was twelve, and a little night music when I was seventeen. And uh, he didn't take it easy on me then, and he didn't he didn't take it easy on me uh, on this either. And that meant that he just pushed everybody. Um, actually, he's such a hard ass. Um, like some of the PAs thought that like he was. They were like, oh, this guy's grumpy. And then they and then like over the course of rehearsal, they were like, oh, my God, he talks to Meryl like that. <laughs> um, so it was like a great combination of people who have that Sondheim thing because he was there, too, um, where, you know, they don't suffer fools and they're not going to hand you a compliment. Um, but it means that when they're happy, you know that it's not bullshit, which is a nice feeling. Right. Sure. I mean, that's super intense. Like. I'm, I'm assuming, in, obviously, you've been in many movies. Was it a different type of rehearsal? I mean, getting ready? Because there's a lot of sort of cues, I'm assuming, you have to take and, and knowing when you're singing and also, like, I have to run, which is not yeah. easy. Yeah, I mean, we did. We choreographed every beat of it. Like, the... Uh, well, you haven't seen it. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we know from the clip, and we're going to play know, a clip in a, thing, in a little bit. You know, that you remember that part. Um, everything is, like, perfectly sort of choreographed as much as we could. Um, you know, things always change on the day, but... Um, we rehearsed for about a month and we were rehearsing in this kind of warehouse that had, you know, I don't know if any of you have been in, um, theater productions of stuff, but you know, they tape out like, this is where a table is. You see, I see you nodding. Um, you know, this is where a table is and sometimes they have a table and you know, this is where a gate is. And so we were wandering around this, uh, warehouse, like we were in a Lars von Trier film and, um, and we were rehearsing it to the point that we were like, we could take this on the road, you guys. <laughs> you kind of could, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just like the the weirdest cast of a touring production of Into the Woods. Do you think if you guys met up on like the 10 year anniversary, you could do it beat for beat? I mean, I'm challenge accepted. Yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> we're marking this day. <laughs> yeah, December 25th plus 10 years. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your character, Cinderella, mm -hmm. which, I mean, was that who, when you even hear, all right, Into the Woods and you're just thinking. Oh, automatically I was I, like, I need oh, to okay. Be Cinderella. oh, okay, great. I'm auditioning for Little Red. That's what I assumed because I'm little and bratty and I have a big voice. And um, so when I heard that, I was like, okay, uh, I for sure thought that I would be like the awkward, loud, um, you know, just belting my way through everything. And um, my agent told me, no, an actual child will be playing that role. Don't be inappropriate. What? Don't make it weird. Um, and so I, I kind of, it took me a minute to wrap my brain around the fact that I am, you know, old enough and I don't know, just considered to be an adult enough to play... Yeah. A Cinderella who ends up being a mother figure to Little Red in in a way, and um, that anybody would think that I was like, 
even though she's clumsy, she's still supposed to be a princess. I was like, that's okay, true. Sure. Um, and a soprano at that. Um, and so that sort of terrified me more than anything else. Um, and, and Paul Gemignani, uh, heard me cause my tendency is to push through, uh, notes when I get nervous and just put everything, um, in my belt. And he, uh, raised the key so that I would be forced to sort of find that um, soprano really? airy voice and have to flip up everything into my upper register. And except that Rob Marshall was like, I, I, you can do that, but you know, you're still going to have to belt that top note. And I was like, yeah, I got to get there. Okay. Only have to do it a couple times. Um, so yeah, I was really afraid of auditioning for um, Cinderella. And I'm really just grateful that Rob saw that in me and believed that I could do it. Rob Marshall directed Into Sorry. the Woods. He also did uh, Chicago with some great musical nine. So working with him, he obviously knows how to work, obviously, theater-based, film-based. But I would say 40% of the time, your character is running. <laughs> Maybe 40 to 60% of the time, you are running. It's which true. is intense. I thought there are a lot of um, sequences where it's um, cutting to different characters running along the same path. And so I would be coming in and, you know, they shot the baker, they shot Little Red, you know, like the that archway right the uh, in, that, you know, lead into the forest. Um, and I thought everybody else was running. I didn't no, realize no, no, that no. I was the only one running. Like Little Red gets to skip and the baker gets to hesitantly walk. And I was just like, You're wow. Sprinting. I was like, wow, guys, we are doing, we are like getting, getting our asses in shape in this movie. But um that was sort of Rob's idea for me that I was just always on the move. Um, so yeah, but they gave me, I had the high heels and I had a set of lower heels for running down some of the steps. And then for the really wide shots, they had a pair of Nikes that they spray painted gold because big budget movies spare no expense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what you got to do. That's what you had to do. Actually, you were talking about running down the steps. So let's maybe actually watch a clip from the film. Uh, we're here because of Into the Woods. Let's watch this moment of Cinderella running down the steps. Boy, that. That's Anna Kendrick in Into the Woods, which is out on Christmas Day. So even in that moment, and you'll see throughout the movie, obviously from your running, there is sort of like a breathlessness in your singing. Yeah. Is, is that from literally just that, yeah, I just did like three takes of running downstairs. <laughs> or is that sort of something trained... For this role, um, I mean, to be honest, uh, the corset really cuts you at the waist, and um, you know, if you have, um, if you're a properly trained singer, which I am not, you're supposed to breathe through your your into your belly, and I breathe into my rib cage because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Um, <laughs> And um, so, I mean, there were times when I could just kind of move around what the corset was doing to me, and there were other times that I could not. <laughs> um, Go with so that. there, you know, that's one of the ones where we had to rely on pre-record because the other option is to have me standing completely still and do that number just with the camera an inch away from my face, and um, we just wanted it to be a visually dynamic film. So um, I, I am out of breath in that, but um, some of that I had to do in ADR because. Uh, I'm singing to a pre-recorded track in some of that, and um, but I'm breathing so heavily that I had to go into a recording studio and just go <laughs> um, to match those breaths. So my job is weird. Yeah, I was just gonna say, is that afterwards when when they're going to the editing phase and we're like, actually, we're gonna need you to come in and just breathe heavily. and just hyperventilate. Yeah, for yeah. like a good two ten minutes yes, for backup. Exactly. That's strange too because then right, you're in one of those little booths mm -hmm. and you just breathe and you're heavily. watching and you're trying to match your own. Breath and and then there's like an old guy just being like thumbs up, great yeah. job, <laughs> bad breathing there, gotta go again. Can we have more breath? More <laughs> breath. That's interesting. Like, would you describe to us sort of some of these takes? Even you mentioned uh, there's a scene where the baker's heading off, uh, Little Red Riding Hood is heading off, and you're heading off, and we see you. The way it is so intercut. There's maybe even a moment where you're just running. You're just like the woods, and then it cuts back to like the baker. I mean, that must be slightly awkward to film. Is there a moment where you're just running and yelling the woods, and then it keeps going? <laughs> I mean, yes and no, <laughs> um, because it's not awkward because you're singing the full line and they're filming you doing it and you're feeling like, oh, this is all going to be about me. This is about Cinderella going through the archway and then you see it and you're like, oh, this is about everybody. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> right. Just James cut, Corden cut to me is for here. half a second. Fine. Well, I, I want to know more just in terms of like this great cast and and the fact that I'm sure you probably got over it right away, you've done movies with music in it, but there has to be a moment where you're sitting there being like, wow, Meryl Streep is singing. Wait, I'm Cinderella, focus. 
yes, all of that. Um, there were the the scene where Meryl sings "Last Midnight." James Corden and I. Um, I mean. Uh, Daniel and Lilla, who play Jack and Little Red, are just you know they don't even how could they 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 right. you know they don't even realize like quite I mean they do but it's like such an incredible thing and the two adult actors in that scene James and I were like the uh, why are we like of all the people in the world who get to see Meryl Streep sing Last Midnight this far away from us and get to do it live like. We're the two idiots that get to be here. Like people yeah. would pay so much money to be in our shoes, and I mean, and we just get to watch her do this over and over again. And it was just such an, like one of those days where you're trying to take mental pictures because it's just one a once in a, total once in a lifetime experience. once in a lifetime experience. And and I want you to describe sort of to everyone who's here this this amazing set that was built. I was just reading last night that like two thousand tons of soil was brought in for you guys to. Oh, the first time have I went woods. into the woods, some of it is on location in, in Windsor Park and all over uh, the the great. Uh, nation of england but some of it was in uh the biggest sound studio in london and they built this set uh this massive forest and the first time i went in there chris pine and i were walking around like with a, stay with your buddy stay with your buddy because it was like the truman show where you weren't sure where it was going to stop and we were like we should throw a rave in here it would be amazing um so it was just so impressive, and you really felt like you could get lost. Like, you couldn't tell where it stopped. And it was freezing, and there were horses, and there were real birds that were living in the rafters because they were like, cool, we'll just stay here. This seems like a great place to live. Yeah. Sure. That sounds kind of cool. Yeah. Do you guys have tree forts or anything going on in there? Not that you know um, of? No, I mean... Uh, I guess we were just tr we were trying to find figure out a way to do a kegger in there. It just didn't happen. Um, but it's a very romantic notion. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was it was we were just take. I mean, we being on this set meant that all of us turned into five year olds again. We sure. were like taking pictures every five seconds. Like uh, everybody, you know, I'm taking pictures of Christine Baranski in her amazing outfits, and she's like, "Send that to me. Email that to me." You know, like. Like, we're teenagers. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, to warm up the crowd, because we're going to get to the Q&A portion, I want you guys to get your questions in order. And as we do that, I am curious, Anna Kendrick, we've got the movie coming out on Christmas. I'm assuming you're talking a lot with your mom right now. I want to know, what was the last thing that your mother texted to you? <laughs> okay, well, okay. This is on my phone. Um, okay, so I tweeted earlier today... Um, uh, every year, the same question. What the hell are you supposed to buy men for Christmas besides socks or a sex doll? And my mom just texted me, was planning to ask you for ideas for your brother for Christmas, but based on your tweet, you don't have any. <laughs> so That's perfect. Literally perfect. That's a good way. I think if you don't mind, we're going to get to the Q&A portion. I'd love to. Hi, Anna. Uh, Hi. Was there something about the script or the character that instantly drew you to the character and basically made you want the role, like want to play it in a way? Um, that's, I feel like so greedy answering that question because I, it could have been the, I could have, I would have played a tree. You know, I mean, it's Meryl Streep and Rob Marshall and Sondheim and I would have done anything that, you know, I was lucky enough to have been asked to do. And I am, I mean, but saying that, I feel so lucky to play this character because she's a fairy tale. But what Sondheim does with her is so fascinating because he sort of forces you to look at a fairy tale as it would actually play out. And the idea that a woman who comes from a home of abuse and neglect and has known nothing but that for her whole life then has the opportunity to marry a prince and still feels like something is not quite right is really interesting. And I think, um, spoiler alerts, um, you know, her decision to part ways with him is, you know, a reflection of this unbelievable reserve of courage that she has. Um, and it's... Uh, it's just a really beautiful idea to me to show that someone can improve their situation in life and still choose the unknown over security and say, I deserve something authentic and real. And I think we're, we face that every day, um, the idea of staying in a situation that makes us feel safe or choosing the unknown for what our instincts are telling us is right for us. Hi, thank you very much for uh, coming out and s talking with us. I'd like to thank you very much for popularizing the musical 
mu uh, movie musical. So excited to see Into the Woods in the last five years. Super excited about that. Thank you. Um, wanted to ask you, first off, you killed it on the song On the Steps of the Palace. Thank you. How do you prepare for that, and especially going up a register? <laughs> I mean, you nailed the, the line in the goo. So great. Thank How do you, you do that? Um, uh, well, first of all, I, 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 I'm so grateful that movie musicals are being made, and I do feel totally greedy for being in so many of them. Um, but I'm not going to stop until it really feels like they're back. And then I'll go, okay, because I, I, I credit Rob Marshall for bringing back the movie musical with Chicago in a big way. Um, and I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. So I apologize for everybody online going, does she have to be in every, because yes, I do. I do. Um, and um, to your question, um, I think Sondheim is a is a gift to perform. It's it's so hard, but it's so fun. Um, so, the thing that I I feel like it it's analogous to is like playing tennis with the best tennis player in the world, where it makes you work your ass off and you hate it and you want to die, but you have just played the best game of tennis you'll ever play. And to have his words and, and, and to have his melody as a guide through this emotional journey is you know, it's it's like being handed this amazing piece of art that says this is a reflection of your character and what she's going through. And if you just allow it to guide you, you're actually going to be in great shape. It's just getting to the part where you can let that happen that um, is hard. And it just it's about putting the, the time in. And for me, anyway, because I'm not um, trained as well as other people are, I you know, it was just about, like, laying out the sheet music and, you know, seven highlighters and all these pens and all these post-it notes. And um, I was, like, kind of a, mu a beautiful mind situation in my apartment. Um, but, uh, you know, it's all worth it because you get to perform that piece. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much for being here. Um, as someone else noted, you have Into the Woods in the last five years and Pitch Perfect, musical fantasy, musical drama, musical comedy. I'm wondering, first of all, which is your favorite of the genres? And ah! second of all, if you had to pick a theatrical dream role, what would it be? Um, I mean, I hadn't even thought about uh, choosing a favorite within the category of musical. Um, I, I, it's, I mean, I know that people put it in that same category, but Pitch Perfect isn't a, a musical in the traditional sense um, uh, because we know we're singing. <laughs> um, so I, I really like the challenge of playing a character who doesn't know that she's singing. It's just happening. And I, I mean, that's already kind of a heightened element and it's almost like a magical realism, which I really like in film. Um, and the last five years is, is unique because it's all sung. And so you don't have to make that transition from a scene to a song. Um, and that makes it easier in some ways because you're playing that heightened reality the whole time. And, uh, you know, trying to bring truth to speaking as I am now and then bursting into song is, um, was a, a unique challenge. Um, and I, I really liked that. Uh, I, I especially liked the scene with uh, the baker's wife with Emily Blunt where uh, we sing he's a very nice prince because it's that was so challenging but she's so alive as an actress she really helped me through that that didn't answer your question at all I just talked I don't know okay hi uh, thank you again oh right here Hi. Uh, so thanks again for being here I, I really appreciate it and like, as a performer myself this show means so much to me and I'm sure other people too so how does it feel to be a part of something that means so much to someone it's terrifying, um, and it because it means so much to me. And I know that if I were on the outside looking in, I would be like, "They better not fuck this up." Um, and I, I'm, I mean, pe people should, communities should be protective of of the thing that you know makes them a community, um, whether it's comic books or musical theater or sports or I mean, you know, I don't know, cooking. What are people into other than this? I don't know, um, and. You know, we just wanted to honor that, and it's exciting that um, that it will hopefully expose people to it who didn't know it. But our number one goal was about people who love it and who have it in their lives, and um, 
I, every time a person says that they're a theater fan and they love the movie, it's like 10 times a bigger deal to me. So um, it's, you know, that result is heartwarming, but the process of knowing that was nothing but terrifying. Um, so I hope you like it. <laughs> okay, good. Hi, Anna, again. Thank you for coming out here uh, to be with us. And uh, I was just wondering if Into the Woods was produced, like, were to be reproduced in the future, what are some pieces of advice you would give to the next actor who plays Cinderella? Oh, my gosh, that's a great question. Um, that was a good question. You know, this sounds like a this sounds like a cop out answer, and I apologize for that. But to me, the the reward of it was finding my personal connection to it because it's such an iconic thing, and how you know, you, there's no way that you can build it yourself. And um, even even Sondheim's Cinderella, I you know I felt, uh, you know, in the scene where she says goodbye to the prince you know it was important to me that that scene was handled with respect and compassion because I think the whole theme of the piece is about that things are not as simple as who's wrong and who's right and that applies to breakups too and you know there's not one good guy and one bad guy and and I feel like that is a, something that's been a theme in my life is respectful breakups and you know, respectful divorces and, you know, civility within separation. And that was a window for me into, into who she is. And, um, and I, and I don't know how other Cinderella's have felt about that scene and if they've, they have every right to play it in a different way. Um, but you know, that was a real key for me was just finding what was important for me to put across in this fairy tale, because it's all about sort of saying that Fairy tales are too simple to actually guide us. Um, they're too simple to for us to rely on them to um, to make things simple when things are complicated. Hi, Anna. Hi. Um, we actually saw Into the Woods on Monday. It was great, and you were great in it. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> My question is, having done Broadway, Pitch Perfect, Into the Woods, and the other movie that you have coming out, have you considered recording a debut album? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I'm in the movie industry, and the music industry seems insane to me. No way, no. I am like one for one with one hit single, and that is it. I'm just gonna stay batting a thousand forever. That's literally perfect. Uh, Anna Kendrick, thank you so much thank for being you. here. We really do appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Into the Woods is out on Christmas Day, December 25th. The soundtrack is 